Hello everyone, you're watching Physio Classroom channel and in this new series of educational videos, we will be covering the theoretical and practical aspect of CIMT, which refers to Constraint Induced Movement Therapy. The intention of making this video series is to provide a practical guide which can be referred by physiotherapy students and young practitioners to implement constraint induced movement therapy among neurological patients. In this introductory video on constraint induced movement therapy, we will be covering the following important points. Namely, point number one, what is CIMT therapy? Point number two, how did this therapy came into existence? Point number three, what are the important components of CIMT therapy? Point number four, what are the underlying mechanisms through which CIMT therapy actually produces recovery among neurological patients? Point number five, what type of patients and in what all conditions can CIMT therapy be utilized? And finally, point number six, in which we will be covering the important research evidences and we will learn what researchers have to say about the impact of CIMT therapy in producing recovery among stroke and other neurological patients. So let's get started. So CIMT or constraint induced movement therapy can be defined as an evidence based rehabilitation technique that has been designed to primarily improve the functional usage of the weaker or the paralytic arm following stroke or any other neurological condition. Now because in this particular rehabilitation technique, the functional usage of the weaker or the paralytic side upper limb is brought about or induced by constraining or limiting the functional usage that is the movements of the normal or the stronger side upper limb, the technique has been named as constraint induced movement therapy. Now what actually is happening in CIMT is let's say for example we have a left side hemiplegic patient so what the therapist is actually going to do is the therapist is going to first restrict or limit the usage of the right side which is of course the normal or the stronger side of the patient now this restriction of movement is achieved by applying a constraint which can be a splint or a glove or even a bandage the intention is that patient should not be able to utilize the normal or the stronger side upper limb to perform the fine motor movements or hand activities. It's like sending the normal side on holiday where it has to do no work for certain period of time. And during that same period when the normal side upper limb is on a holiday, the therapist enrolls the weaker or the paralytic side upper limb of the patient into an intensive training program which we can call as a type of a crash course. During this period, the patient is supposed to practice and master lot many movement patterns and functional tasks utilizing the weaker side upper limb. The ultimate goal of the CIMT training program is to enable the patient to functionally use the weaker side upper limb automatically. That is, the patient should not be consciously thinking about using the weaker side upper limb and the usage should take place on its own. This helps in ensuring the functional usage of the weaker side upper limb for long term period. So now let's talk about how did CIMT therapy came into existence. Now this idea of constraining the stronger side upper limb to facilitate the functional recovery of the weaker side was first proposed by Dr. Edward Taub. Dr. Edward Taub, a behavioral neuroscientist from United States, has been credited for the development of constraint induced movement therapy in 1993. Dr. Edward Taub, along with his colleagues, were successfully able to demonstrate the neuroplasticity phenomenon as the mechanism of recovery among stroke survivors following application of the CIMT training protocols. Now this brings us to our third point of discussion. What is the underlying mechanism for neurological recovery following CIMT training? And the answer is neuroplasticity. Now neuroplasticity refers to the ability of the brain to adapt, repair and reorganize itself following any neurological insult or an injury. 
Neuroplasticity will become more easier to understand when we will be discussing in detail the mechanism for the development of learned non-use among stroke patients and the reversal of learned non-use after application of CIMT training programs. Now coming on to in what all conditions can CIMT training be applied and what are the type of patients who can actually get benefited by getting enrolled into CIMT training programs. Now researchers have shown CIMT therapy to be equally effective for both the pediatric and the adult age population. Main conditions in which CIMT training programs have shown significant improvements in the functional usage of paratic upper limb includes conditions like stroke, incomplete spinal cord injury, traumatic brain injury, Parkinson's disease, multiple sclerosis, cerebral palsy, etc. So now finally, before we conclude this introductory video, let's discuss about what important researchers have to say about the impact of constraint induced movement therapy. Now when looking at the research based evidences, one can easily conclude CIMT to be most evidence based training program that is available for the physiotherapist to facilitate unilateral upper limb recovery in neurological patients. CIMT has actually been the subject of research study in various randomized controlled trials with the largest reference published in the year 2006 in America as EXCITE trials. EXCITE that refers to extremity constraint induced therapy evaluation. This was a research which was headed by Dr. Stephen Wolf. In this particular research, 222 stroke patients 3 to 9 months post stroke were enrolled randomly into either a CIMT training program or the usual care group. The EXCITE trial showed that the stroke subjects who were enrolled for the two-week intensive CIMT training program showed statistically significant and clinically relevant improvements in the upper limb function as compared to the control or the usual care group. The upper limb functions of both the groups were again compared at various follow-up periods and it was found that even after two years of the completion of the CIMT training program, the CIMT training group showed statistically significant improvements in the automatic usage of the weaker side upper limb for carrying out day-to-day -day activities as compared to the control group. Now this provides us the evidence for the long-term benefits of the CIMT training program. Now researchers have not only shown CIMP training programs to bring about significant improvements in the upper limb motor functions, but there have been numerous research studies which have actually demonstrated through transcranial magnetic stimulation that CIMT can actually result in increase in the size of the motor representation of the paratic upper limb in the motor homunculus in the cortex. CIMT has also been researched, reviewed and studied via various systematic reviews and meta-analysis of different randomized control trials like the one published in 2012 by Pirola et al. The findings of this research work concluded that both the CIMT and the less intensive modified CIMT training programs were equally effective in significantly improving hand functions after stroke carried out at various dosage of training program ranging from 2 to 10 weeks. The evidences obtained from various researches made CIMT to get included in the NICE guidelines for stroke rehabilitation in 2013. Now NICE refers to the National Institute for Health and Care Excellence. CIMT also became the most recommended intervention for improving upper limb function after stroke after getting included in the National Clinical Guidelines for Stroke Rehabilitation prepared by the Intercollegiate Stroke Working Party in 2016. This fifth edition of the National Clinical Guidelines for Stroke were published in October 2016 and provides the most comprehensive overview of the management of the stroke available right from the acute care to long-term management. So I sincerely hope that the information shared in this 
and our upcoming videos is going to be helpful for the rehabilitation professionals and students and it will become easier to practice and implement CIMT training programs on suitable patients. See you all in our next video. Till then, keep learning, keep sharing and stay connected.